on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. Billionaire Michael Novogratz has 10% of his net worth in crypto. Well, why did he do that then? Let's have a look. TunnelBear is the simple VPN app that makes it easy to browse the web privately and enjoy a more open and secure internet experience. Try TunnelBear for free by checking out the link in the video description below. Hi there guys and welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I'm your host, Chris Coney. And today is Monday the 24th of April 2017. Two announcements today, market roundup and then the news. Last chance to go to cryptoversity.com forward slash survey and submit your questions for Brendan Ike from the Brave Project and the upcoming Basic Attention Token, which is going to be a, a platform that will block ads. And if you don't want to block ads, it will pay you to see ads. So if you haven't seen that yet, go to basicattentiontoken.org and get familiar with this. This is probably my most anticipated guest given that I have a history of marketing and all that kind of stuff. And I get the industry. I understand the problem. I understand the solution. And uh, I'm really excited about it. So go to cryptoversity.com forward slash survey. Stick any question you would like me to ask Brendan Ike. Uh, we've had like 20 questions submitted so far. Uh, some real good ones. And if you want a shout out, put your name in this form and then I'll get them. Today is the last day because I am having my conversation with Brendan tomorrow on Tuesday. And then I'll put out the episode maybe Wednesday or Thursday this week. So go check that out and I look forward to your questions. And guess who's back? Well, almost. You see here, this is the Litecoin stats for SegWit support amongst miners. The current activation period says 74.7% support. That's tickling the activation threshold of 75%. Still a third of a percent shy. However, when you look at the daily figures for the last 24 hours, 96.7%. So if that holds, then it's going to get back up above the activation threshold, isn't it? Although, as we know, this was a fake out last time. You know, as soon as it went above the 75% and the price jumped, then support went down again. So, you know, I'm going to kind of take this casually this time around and see what happens. Now let's move on to the market roundup courtesy of CoinMarketCap.com. Now, since it's been two weekend days since the last market roundup, we're better off focusing on the raw coin prices today. We will look at the percentages, of course, but they are less significant because they're based on a 24-hour period from Sunday to Monday. So the first thing to note is that Litecoin had a big old jump over the weekend. And as I just mentioned in the announcement section there, Litecoin miners are now signaling support for SegWit around the 74.7% mark. Now that, coupled with $155 million worth of trading volume, seems like a bit of a coincidence to me. I don't know about you. Litecoin now sits at $13.64, and it's left a dash in the dust a little bit here with uh, a $692.7 million market cap. That's like 50% more than Dash, so it has really left it in the dust there. Other notables today are Ethereum Classic, which took the number six spot from Monero on Friday, and it continues to hold on to that position today. Ethereum Classic is leading Monero by almost $50 million of market cap. Not surprising when Ethereum Classic is showing a 16% gain just today. Monero itself still holding its value around $20 a coin and sitting at number 7. But the biggest story today has to be Decred springing into the 11th place after gaining almost 15% today, and a bit over the weekend actually, making a Decred coin worth $18.03. Big jump there for Decred. Now, the other side of that coin actually, excuse the pun, is Pivex, which has gone the other way, dropping to 14th place, 18.8% loss today, and a coin price of $1.16. Actually, due to popular demand, I have Pivex booked as a guest for the show, so... Stay tuned for that in the coming weeks. Also, if you'd like Decred to come on the show and talk to us, let me know in the comments below and I'll see about getting them on. And also, as if as if I had the Midas touch here, Waves has had a good 
time these last few days, jumping up now to 60 cents a coin near enough, and a $60 million market cap, and Waves returns to the top 20 in the 17th position. You know, some really intense competition for the top 20 spots now, seriously. Uh, so final mention, let's give the final mention here to Tether. You know, we did a video a couple of weeks ago about Tether and how it's this digital token that's like a digital dollar that's always worth one dollar in the crypto world, right? Except when it isn't, like today, where it's worth 92 cents a coin. And that's a problem. You see, this is because the Tether company, like we discussed with Bitfinex, are having trouble with their banks. You know, meaning people are getting a bit worried that the Tether company, which is the company that actually holds the dollars on deposit, aren't going to be able to redeem your Tether coins for dollars because they're having banking problems. And thus people are like selling the Tether coins and fewer people are buying them. So that's how come the value of a Tether coin has got way out of kilter with the with the dollar. It's 8% variance now, you know, 92 cents. That's a huge gap between what it should be worth and what it actually is worth. Such is the nightmare when you try and bridge the legacy financial system with the wonderful world of crypto. In terms of the news then, I've turned to Bitcoin.com. We have a Kevin Helms article from a couple of days ago. I saw this um, headline a few times and a few other crypto folks on YouTube have covered it, but uh, I didn't have anything to say until this morning. This is the thing about me. I'm not very quick, right? I'm My, my best stuff comes when I don't have to think on my feet. Right? If I have time to process something i can come out with some really deep insights but i have to sit on it before i can pull them out so that means i'm probably not the best source for breaking news but if you want the depth if you want the insights come to me for them so this article is why billionaire novogratz holds 10 percent of his wealth in bitcoin and ether that's not strictly true it doesn't actually say that he doesn't actually say that specifically it's just in crypto so we'll get into that now i'm glad this story came up you know because it's given me the opportunity to dispel a terrible myth about terms like millionaire and billionaire. We'll get into this as we go through, but I think terms like billionaire have become what I call a complex equivalence. And by that I mean, someone tells you this guy's a billionaire, and then you suddenly come to all these other conclusions about him, like how much money he actually has, how great a businessman he must be, etc. You know, all of that comes from your own mind and not from reality. So let's get into this and I'll explain more about what I'm talking about here. So it starts out by saying billionaire Michael Novogratz reportedly revealed that he has 10% of his money invested in Bitcoin and Ether. He also predicts that the price of Bitcoin will go to $2,000. Well, first, 10%. I'd say that's fair if you hadn't got too deep into the industry. My belief, though, is that the more you learn about crypto and, well, economics in general, the more you tend to put in. And I'd say it's more likely to do with your knowledge of crypto and how it's fundamentally solving the fundamental problems of the legacy financial system. Because I can't say that Michael doesn't know economics, of course he does. By contrast though, to Michael, I have about 67% of my net worth in crypto. So that 67% is further diversified into various crypto assets such as, you know, Bitcoin, peer plays, Humanic, and so on. So not just currencies, you know, crypto assets as a whole. Then it moves on here, it says 10% of his money in Bitcoin and Ether. And there's a quote, it says, quote, 10% of my net worth is in this space. It's the best investment of my life. Close quote. Well, he says there it's invested in the space. So we don't know how much money is in Bitcoin or Ether or any particular asset. See, this could also mean that he's invested in physical shares of crypto companies. You know, that would be technically still invested in the space. And as a side note, I don't really understand why people use that term, the space, because what they're referring to is quite obviously occupied by a community. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So moving on to the other bit. There's a bit here that says why he is pro-Bitcoin. And it says, citing an open source community with huge brain power from over 30,000 individual programmers, he says, quote, I think it's real. There's a lot of smart money going into it. I've never seen a small project with more human capital going into it. And so, I kind of want to just bet on that alone. Close quote. You see, this sounds much more like how I begin to build a case for my own investing decisions, right? I look for a solid route on which I can build the rest of the argument for making an investment. And in the case of crypto, it's the principles of decentralization and the shift towards networked organizations. 
Uh, these were two shifts that I was already aware of prior to discovering crypto. And since it's always wise to follow the trend, crypto investments have that advantage of having this tailwind, right? And thus that's a fundamentally higher chance of success long term if you are going with the flow. So moving on to the section here, self-made billionaire is the headline. So this is the part where I want to unpack the term billionaire. The reason I want to do this is because I believe that so many of us have got our self-worth tangled up with our net worth. Right? For me, this was probably the single hardest belief to identify that I then had to gradually unravel. So those were two jobs, right? The belief is that you know, my self-worth is equal to my net worth. In other words, if I'm financially poor, I'm worthless as a person. If I'm financially rich, I'm more valuable as a person. Now, don't pass that off intellectually and say, well, of course not, right? These beliefs are very good at hiding themselves, which is why identifying that I had them in the first place was actually one of the hardest tasks. And then I've spent the last several years unraveling them. Anyway, what I'm getting at here is the term billionaire, right? If we hear that someone is a billionaire, unconsciously, they go up in our estimation as a person, right? That's how I began to identify that I had these beliefs. And I think I'm talking specifically to people probably in the U USA and the UK uh, and probably other European countries. I'm not sure if Eastern countries have this same problem because our cultures in the UK and the USA, the culture itself has this underlying sort of tendency to encourage us to tangle those two things up, self-worth and net worth. So this is the way we assess the value of others. Well, we'll be using the same measure for ourselves, right? Now, the second part to this is how billionaires become billionaires, which is the bit in blue. It says here, his, it's talking about Michael, his net worth was $1.5 billion that year, which was 2007, according to Forbes. He became a self-made billionaire, quote, with the public offering of Fortress Investment Group, close quote. Now, in crypto, we have the ICOs, right, or the initial coin offerings. But that's a term derived from IPO, or initial public offering. And that's a term that came from the regular stock market investing industry. So there are a couple of important points here. If I sell my half of a company to the public through an IPO, I retain the other half of the shares. And if the share price skyrockets in value, then my half of the company may become worth billions, right? That technically makes me a billionaire, but only on paper. I'm not a cash billionaire, which is why I think many people get confused. If you think billionaire status is a cash billionaire, it creates as like this impossible target that's impossible to reach. Now, I'm not tending to have a go at Michael specifically here. It's just that he happens to be the example that I'm using. But this is how most billionaires are made, through huge asset appreciation. And because of that, you can go from being a billionaire one year to a millionaire the next year simply by a shift in asset prices. And it's got very little to do with the, them as people, or more importantly, their contribution to humanity at large. Anyway, let's get back to the main point here. Now, his actual net worth isn't known, but let's say Michael's net worth is $1 billion. That would make his crypto investments $100 million, which means Michael's investments account for 0.3% of all the money that's in crypto right now. An interesting calculation, wouldn't you say? Okay, so let's round this off with the bottom bit, which is the purple. It says, then on Wednesday, Novogratz told the Harvard Business School club crowd that Bitcoin's price will go over $2,000. Now, you see, that's daft. It gets on my nerves when people talk like that, especially notable investors like this guy. They talk about it like it's a stock, right? Will it ever trade over $2,000 a share? Well, what I don't like about that is that it continues to train people to think about crypto in these terms, which I think leads them astray. Well, of course, Bitcoin will reach $2,000. It's just a matter of when, right? So to answer the original question as to why he invested 10% of his net worth, I would sum that up to say that it's his belief in the crypto community as a whole that's caused him to do this. So thanks for joining me today, guys. If you liked this episode, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. Please leave me a comment below with some feedback and get subscribed. And please support the Cryptoverse and boost cryptocurrency adoption by going to cryptoversity.com forward slash podcast and becoming a patron. From just a few dollars a month, you can secure Cryptoversity's future Get unlimited access to all Cryptoversity courses, 
and access a private patrons only chat group where you get direct access to me. That is all for today guys, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney saying bye for now.